What's up guys? So today I want to talk a little bit about a more advanced topic, a signals intelligence topic that I haven't really heard anyone else talking about in the realm of the privacy and security arena. So we're going to be talking a little bit about radio or RF fingerprinting today. Now, if you were to clone a phone, let's say you have a phone and you cloned another person's IMSI. Well, that phone being cloned can be detected using something called radio fingerprinting. And this is something that could be used by cellular operators to prevent the cloning of cellular phones. In fact, according to Wikipedia, it is used commonly by cellular providers to prevent the cloning of phones. A clone device may have the same numeric equipment, something like the IMSI, for instance, but a different radio fingerprint. And why is that the case? Well, because each electronic device is going to have its very own unique signature. We'll go over to this paper. So we can see that radio fingerprinting actually is composed of various different things. So the unique chipset provides a unique fingerprint. Things like the combination. It's a combination of things. So it's not just the chipset. It's the antenna, the power amplifiers, the filters, the clocks, everything that is built into a wireless card. Something like we see here, this is a Wi-Fi card in a laptop that's been opened up. Now there's an original Wi-Fi card and I'm also going to be sharing solutions with you today. So don't worry about that, hang in there and I'll get to the solutions shortly. So each computer is going to come with its own Wi-Fi, unique Wi-Fi device. And that unique Wi-Fi device is going to have its own unique radio signature that's going to uniquely be able to identify this. And that's an issue to those who care about privacy. Now we're all familiar with things like the MAC address, other things that are transmitted at the network level. But this is at the hardware level where something actually creates its own unique hardware fingerprint wirelessly. So it can be wirelessly sniffed and picked up to uniquely identify that unique radio device. And this can be done on phones where you're kind of stuck with that because with phones you can't really change out the hardware. But my solution that I haven't heard anyone talk about is to actually change out the Wi-Fi device. So you can actually do that, especially if you have a computer from the shop, for instance, or from somewhere else, somewhere that has removed the Wi-Fi whitelist. And I always remove the Wi-Fi whitelist on all the computers in our shop, so you can easily change out those Wi-Fi devices, creating a new unique fingerprint. In fact, I have a stack of them right here. You can see it is a stack I just got. I uh, also have another stack over here, so I could have several different brands if I really wanted to continuously change my unique radio fingerprint. Uh, I could actually change out the chipset, change out the cards, just randomly, different brands, different uh, chipsets, different combination of things would create a new unique fingerprint. Now, you may say, well, fingerprints aren't good. Well, they can be if you have a strategy like I have come up with, which is to, and I'm not saying I'm actively doing this because I'm not. I don't think I have the need to, but for someone who really maybe felt the need to, if you're super paranoid, you could technically use a different Wi-Fi card every month, every other week, you know, and they are relatively affordable. So the ones for inside the computer, you can get for like 20 bucks or less, a lot of cases, depending on the model, all depends on the model. But if you went, if you wanted to create some throwaway Wi-Fi devices, simply buy the cheapest ones you can of different brands and vary that. And then you can throw them in the trash. And what is it? A cost of $20 a month for a new one every month. Not a big cost there. If you break it down, it's less than a dollar a day. So for those who really care about their radio fingerprint on a Wi-Fi level, um, you may want to do that. You may decide you want to change them out. Now you may say, well, I'm not, I don't have a computer from the blog shop. I don't have the Wi-Fi whitelist removed. And unfortunately, the newest computers have the Wi-Fi card soldered in the computer. What can I do there? Well, I also have a solution for you. You can actually go out and get yourself a USB Wi-Fi adapter. Something like an Alpha card, for instance, is a highly recommended one for those who are interested in ethical pen testing. Or you could really get any USB adapter Wi-Fi card and change it out as often as you want. But 
Key point here is you want to disable your other wireless devices using something like RF kill block, and then you can actually block out the radios in your Wi-Fi device that's built into the computer. Since it's soldered in, now you could physically remove it, you know, soften up that solder with some heat, and then just pull the Wi-Fi card soldered in out. Uh, but you could also just block it and then use a USB-based adapter to change the unique Wi-Fi fingerprint of that hardware device. So this is all based on the unique combination of the amplifiers, the clocks, the filters, things like, you know, there can be a broad variation, as it mentions here, in the phase offset, the clock skew, and other features. So a lot of this can be unique also to the firmware. So somebody could actually change in a slight way the fingerprint of their Wi-Fi device by simply changing the firmware in certain cases. It could change the way that hardware operates. And each piece of firmware is going to, you know, have a, a different way of asking that hardware to operate, or at least it could by design in some cases. But no matter what, the safest bet is to simply completely replace that Wi-Fi card with another one if you're worried about the unique radio fingerprint. Since these things can be tracked at a distance, now it's still a good idea to, of course, you know, spoof your MAC address, spoof, you know, whatever you can, um, but you should take all these things into consideration and realize that most people are not tracking the unique radio fingerprint of your hardware. Um, but if they were, you do have an option. You could change out the hardware itself. And having throwaways can be an easy solution for that. So let me know what you guys think about this topic. I haven't heard anyone else talk about this strategy I came up with on changing out your Wi-Fi hardware. And maybe someone has. I just haven't seen it. Um, but I'd be interested to hear what you guys think. And if you're interested in a computer where you can change out the hardware and Wi-Fi devices, send me a message or check out the blog shop and it's another way to support the channel and I'll keep coming out with these unique topics to share how you can protect your security and privacy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to like the video, let me know what you think, give me some feedback and I'll see you then.